everybody, welcome to Brickwork, my name is Mike and uh, today we have the Fire Mac for you, that is the LEGO Ninjago movie set uh, from 2017, great set with 6 minifigs included and a massive over 900 pieces Mac. We have built this guy on a live stream so you can check out the recording on our Twitch account if you want to, but this video is gonna be all about the review. And here is the completed Mac. Looks uh, simply awesome, very military look, a lot of stickers that are making those numbers and uh, military codes along the body, plus those two massive flamethrowers built uh, from Technic. This is a really great looking piece of armament right there and I think that is by far the best looking Mac we have had in LEGO so far. The previous uh, Kai's Mac was not as big this guy is pretty much towering everything you put against it and uh, I think it's just the best looking set of the Ninjago vehicles so far. Well, I don't know what's gonna be happening next year for those vehicles, but from this wave, this one is my number one favorite. And let's check out the builds. Starting from the feet, those are uh, quite solid builds. Make the thing stand very in a very solid fashion. They move slightly, you can see the movement is limited on this joint and this flat piece that is limiting on how far it can go. So with that you can make the feet uh, well look like it's walking. So you can push one slightly forward and the other one back. So you can see the look is kind of a walking fashion. But uh, that being said, the knees are not bent. So you cannot bend those here. There is a mechanism in the back, but just for the looks, it doesn't really bend at all. So this thing can only stay stay uh, straightened up. I think that's a good idea because it makes the thing very solid and you can place it on a number of surfaces without the fear of this falling over. I also have to give some credit for the stickers in this set because there is a number of them but they all look great. We can see this uh, somewhat of a Ninjago language stickers, some numbers and uh, well all the cool stuff that makes the mech look somewhat of a military build, maybe even like a mech warrior build like a massive mech that is fighting on military battles. Well, it does look that way. Uh, adding those two massive flamethrowers plus those stickers makes it look really intimidating. So I really love the way the stickers work for this beautiful looks for the set. The flamethrowers look awesome. That is a mirror built on both arms. You can see the flame coming off on both ends. I think they look great, one of the best looking uh, weapon builds in a such vehicle I have seen for a while now. And uh, as we speak about the arms, they are highly plausible, much better than the legs. So you can grab this guy and move the arms back and forth like that. And also their elbows are fully working so you can stand it down in a, like a standby position and you can place it forward for the firing and fighting position. Those two joints work pretty good, there are detecting joints so the arms are not going anywhere and well it just works as intended. More in the good looks department we have the hoses that are providing fuel for the weapons of destruction, the flamethrowers. They are coming out of these two tanks in the back. I first thought it was a jetpack but apparently and of course there are tanks for the fuel for those massive weapons. Uh, they look really good. I think those hoses actually make the build look great both from the front when the cockpit is residing, which looks great for such type of build. and But the back has nothing to be ashamed of. I think those tanks, along with uh, the great use of hoses, looks uh, amazing and LEGO did a really good job on this one. 
I just love the way how the whole thing is detailed, those uh, fake pistons and some cogs and a lot of pieces that would actually be visible on such mechanical build are there, so LEGO was not cutting any corners here. I think what they should have added, they have added, so nothing is looking out of place, it all looks simply great. The armored cockpit is having a number of special armor plates, so first we have this groin armor that is residing right under the cockpit, then we have the shoulder pads on the arms that prevent any hits from coming in. To the side of the mag there is some lights actually on the arms that you can see are probably useful for illuminating the um, area in front of the mag. Then we have two disc shooters, there is one here and one on the other side, they, look, they work great because the mechanism is hidden very well you can see how tiny it is but the pressure you apply makes those things fly really far and the cockpit well holds the Kai minifig and it opens in a really fun way so as you reach for the cockpit you can open up the top section right here and the bottom section also folds down so there's plenty of space to fit the minifig and the Kai is our pilot of course and he can even sit there with two of his katanas so you can just bend the knees and there is just enough space to put him inside and close the cockpit even though with his swords intact. I think there is a great way to well keep the accessories with the minifig and not um, you know struggle too much with putting him inside. There is not much detail going on here. The only controls he has are those two blue levers. There is not even a print for any console or anything but uh, I think it's justified because the cockpit is somewhat vertical so there is not really much space to put any special bricks inside. I think those levers are just enough. At the top you can see the lights that can be moved a bit so you can change the angle of them and make them look slightly different every time you play with the set. And right above them there are the battle banners or flags that are showcasing this intimidating uh, look of the mech. We have some logos and some flame imprints. Those are stickers by the way, so not a print. The set is heavy on stickers as I mentioned before, but that doesn't really take away from the looks. And those add to this uh, great battle look for the entire vehicle. I think that is just a great oriental touch because you can see those flags in a number of battles that Japan for example was participating in and uh, well they just uh, are a great touch to this entire set. The set comes with five really awesome minifigs, uh, all of them are highly unique to the new Ninja Go movie line and uh, let's start off with checking out the Kai minifig. Kai is coming in his new red outfit, that's a new print for the LEGO Ninja Go movie sets and also there is a new approach to the Ninja Go mask, that is a two piece uh, mask right now, so we have the bottom piece and the upper piece, so that means they can stay with their hair on and bandanas only. He comes with two face expressions, the first one saying it wasn't me, face expression, kind of like that, and the second one is uh, angry. I like the print for both faces, especially this patch covering some bruises on his forehead. Also he comes with a new print for his black legs and two classic Ninja Go Katana swords. The next ninja minifig in the set is Zane. He also comes with two face expressions, the green and the angry one. Also you can see his iconic blue eyes visible on both prints. Also two piece uh, ninja go mask with his logo on the forehead as Kai was also having his logo on his forehead as well. And uh, the print for the torso is really nice, very slick looking white outfit with some, I think a radio and some equipment on his belt. And his uh, accessories are the quiver and his trusty bow. Great looking minifig, but of course not the best one because there are still to come. And here we have the hammerhead minifig that is the villain in this set. He's a great looking guy, especially his helmet with this new type of shark mold. Great looking uh, piece of uh, headwear. I like some equipment along his chin and those shark teeth with some eyes just co um, covering his face. That is a really awesome looking piece. His face expressions are two, we have the sad one or maybe angry and there is a really frenzy type of expression. You can see some sort of uh, red background or a red um, underline around his eyes that is maybe saying that he's possessed or something or controlled by Garmadon. We don't know until the movie shows up. His print for a torso is also really good. You can see the tactical harness along with some pouches and his armor underneath in this blue to gray color. And he comes with a scuba tank plus a crazy looking uh, fish weapon that is a fish with uh, Thor's hammer piece sticking out of its mouth. 
Well, a lot of these minifigs are getting some sort of fish weapons, so we're gonna see what that's about. But this guy looks really good and kind of ridiculous at the same time. And uh, speaking of ridiculous, here we have Jelly, the second villain henchman, and this guy is, well, ridiculous as I said. He comes with a new piece, that is the dome, or a helmet that goes over his head, that's a two-piece thing. So you can snap it off in two halves, and that represents a print for a jellyfish over his head. You can see its uh, tentacles or some things just over his front and back torso, over his tactical harness. Well, great looking figure, I have to say, very creative and very ridiculous again. And uh, he comes also with the fish weapon. This time around we have a stud shooter gun with, well, a fish sticking out right behind it. So, well, I'm not sure what this is about, but we're gonna see pretty soon. And his legs also get a print. Just um, additional print for the tactical gear. Looks really good and I think that's the craziest minifig and craziest villain I have seen for a while now. And last but not least, we have two civilians in the set. First one here is this colorful lady. Her outfit is very colorful, I have to say, like the print for her blouse. And uh, the skirt on the legs also gets some printing. She comes with ice cream and two very expressive uh, face expressions. The first one is this somewhat of a confused green, like, okay, everything is fine, nothing's happening. And the second one is a full scale terrified look. Well, she might have just seen Garmadon's forces pouring into the city. I like her a lot and same goes for her hairpiece, which is not very common and in a very good color. And this is the last guy, but my favorite for this set because he has some ridiculous face expressions. First one is not too crazy like this scared look, but the second one is the best one I have seen in a while now. That is a full cry expression. He's super terrified. He's crying like a baby. Looks awesome. And I think Lego is doing some great stuff with those new cartoony face expressions. This one is a great example. Uh, he also comes with a new mold for hair. This is a brown, somewhat of a rubbery piece for his male hair. Looks good, so I would love to see this one in a number of sets. Uh, that is a very good piece. And also his torso with this fish print and the dark uh, blue coral looks pretty good. Uh, also his typical piece of ice cream and even legs are getting print for the belt. The cool thing here is that he comes with a stand, uh, just a simple 3 by 3 plate with some tiles that he can stand on so that he looks like he's running. Quite a good idea and I'm glad they added it. My closing thoughts on this set is that it is simply excellent. You get 944 pieces of awesomeness. $70 is not a bad price for such set. It is very well designed, great looking, military almost looking mech vehicle along with awesome minifigs, a great way to start your Ninja Go sets collection. I think you don't have to think too much to jump onto this set as long as you have the money. This one is very, very well worth it. All right, and that is it for this review episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. The Fire Mech must be one of the coolest looking mechs I have seen in LEGO form of all time. I like this guy a lot, and if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. My name is Mike, and I'll see you again on Brick Vault. Yeah.